Today I'm making a commando droid. First off, I want to thank my patrons who make these videos possible. Today's upload was supposed to be a helmet requested by my highest pledging patrons. I had the visor buck all sanded and ready for vacuum forming. I went to grab some plastic and was out. So I ordered more, but shipping is slowed way down because of the pandemic. And I don't want you all waiting a month for content, so I thought I'd tackle one of my unfinished projects. And unfortunately, there's so many to choose from. Initially, I was all like, well, Lady Mando, that's the obvious choice, right? But it's kind of difficult to work on that while social distancing. Six feet of social distancing. Oh. Five, four. So, Commando Droid it is. First, I rewatch Clone Wars. All right, here we go. Now back to the build. Then I drew what I thought looked right onto cardboard and traced that onto EVA foam floor mats. Then I cut out each individual piece. The limb segments are comprised of three layers of foam mats. The commando droid limbs are a bit thicker than the battle droid. This is because they were designed to be slightly more proportional to humans so they could disguise themselves in clone armor in order to infiltrate clone ranks. Although I'm looking at this forearm and I can't even begin to tell you how it's supposed to fit inside a gauntlet. I'm cutting these out with scissors and Cosplay Apprentice's razor pen for the awkward angle. I also cut circles for the joints. Those are the diameter of the inside of a duct tape spool. If anyone was wondering about that, it's a good scale reference. I also cut rectangles for the palms of the hands. Those are two sheets deep. And I use foam dowels from both Michael's and TNT Cosplay Supply for the joints. Craft foam for the fingers. And a couple of puzzle piece offcuts to hold the hinge. But don't feel limited by any of these materials. Maybe the battle droid hand to use thread spools. Due to its similarity, for reference, I'm using this hand that was generously donated by my battle droid. Next, I cut curved ribbing for the, you know, I'm just gonna call them muscles. I cut the skin of those using Michael's Craft Foam, which is extremely soft and malleable, the kind that comes in rolls. Does anybody else have a coping saw on their dish rack? No, just me? Okay, moving on. These templates are all guesses. I get asked a lot for templates and they usually change over the course of the build process, so they're not really gonna help. All but one of these templates had to be modified, so take them with a grain of salt. I heat form them with a heat gun and shape them on a backup battle droid head, cause you know we've all got those lying around. Then I sanded the edges to be flush with the surface of the arm pieces. Now it's time to glue it up. I glued the panels together with contact cement. If you happen to get the foam with this diamond pattern on the back, it would help the gluing process if you were to sand it away first. I can't get replacement mask filters right now because of the pandemic, so I'm trying to cut down on sanding. Also, I just don't like sanding. It's coarse and rough and irritating. Where'd she go? You mean that doesn't work? So I have to get rid of those seams later with quick seal. Oh, I messed up on that. The piece with glue on both sides should be the center one. Luckily that's gonna get painted over later, but that almost doesn't even matter. I mean, see how the foam just absorbs the glue? It's like a sponge. All those non-textured surfaces, you may even wanna do two coats on those just for a stronger bind. I carefully attach the muscle pieces. They're coming out a bit lumpy, but most of that'll even out later with a heat gun pass. And what doesn't, I'll get with Filler and weathering. That inner muscle was the only piece to come out perfect. The rest have to be heavily modified. So I'm gonna take a break from that to work on the hands. I used the same glue on the hand, but cut a little bit off of one side of the thumb cylinder just to create more surface area for a more stable bond. Pay attention to the thumb placement because that would be a very embarrassing mistake if you made two left hands or something. You want them to be symmetrical, not identical. Now that the cement on the arms is done releasing toxic fumes, I filled in the cracks with quick seal. Should be wearing gloves while doing this, but again, there's shortage because of the pandemic, so. You know, between the hand washing and the chemicals, my skin is just disintegrating. I do a lot of heavy modification to get those arms to come out right. Once I got them all chopped up, filled in, and sanded, I painted them in several layers of plastidip. You want to paint all those parts separately to prevent the hinges from gumming up. Then I add fingers to the hands, stuck them together with wooden dowels and paper clips for the actual hinge part. You don't need to drill a hole, you can just stab it in there. That'll help the hand hold a pose. Now for the joint. The wrist is kind of complicated. It should should be a T-joint, but it's meant to look like a ball and socket joint. So I chose to replicate that with a ping pong ball and skewers. I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but I use what I have on hand, guys. That middle skewer is temporary so that it'd be easier to paint. When the paint was dry, I trimmed the skewers. That cut was the biggest editing lie ever. That spray paint took 
days to dry. But when it did, I made the swivelly part out of machine screws and scrap foam and then embedded them in the hands. Then I attached the whole thing to the forearm and completed the elbow joint. The shoulder joint is also kind of complicated. I had to cut 45% out of a foam ball. Is that what that? It looks like a 3D pie chart. Math jokes. And then cut a notch in one side and skewered it onto the arm. Well, skewer glued. Filled in the gaps with quick seal and stab a hinge through it. Because you're applying force to something fragile, it's not an easy process as illustrated by the amount of quick seal on my first attempt there. That's, I'm, and I'm, I know I'm gonna have to do more later. I can't use spray paint on styrofoam, so I'm using this brush copper paint. I actually like that color a lot better and it was faster drying than the spray paint. So I used it on the arm muscle as well. Doesn't quite match the spray paint, so I think I'll redo the forearms eventually. When they dried, I went over all the edges with silver rub and buff and all the seams with black acrylic. This not only implies weathering, but also hides so, so many crimes. Then I attached them to the torso, which I built in part two of this series. And that's how you make a commando droid. All oh, right, legs. Yes, I forgot. Thanks for watching, everybody. And oh, hey, the part I was waiting on finally arrived. So back to the patron build. If you enjoyed this, consider supporting me on Patreon. Or if you're not able to do that, you can like and subscribe and check out the many, many past uploads. Uh, what's your favorite Star Wars droid? Let me know in comments below. See you later.